All right, guys, welcome back. In this video, we have a simply supported beam that we want to draw the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram for. But in this beam, we have a couple point loads and a distributed load. And the point is to talk about what happens when we have like a point load somewhere in the middle of a distributed load. It's a good question. So we're going to go over that in this video. Uh, the first thing that we want to do is we want to draw the free body diagram basically and then solve for the reactions at A and B. And it turns out that the reaction at AY is 30 kilonewtons and BY is 50 kilonewtons. So now let's set up our shear force diagram and bending moment diagram below the original drawing. And then let's also, just for our own reference, draw our positive sign convention for virtual sections in a, in a member like this. So shear, if it's to the left of a cut, is positive if it's going up, and positive if it's going down to the right of a cut. And then we have those internal moments again, like that, just like the, all the previous videos. All right, so the fast way that you can draw shear force diagrams and bending moment diagrams um, is a little bit like the way that we've been doing before, but there's a quicker way. Uh, we're just going to use a single drawing here, a single diagram, and uh, this will be able to let you go a lot faster through the problem without, because normally what we would do is every time there's a point load or there's a, a change in a distributed load, so it starts, stops, or changes shape, or there's another point load even if it's inside of a distributed load or if there's an applied moment somewhere. Basically every time we would have to draw a uh, you know, free body diagram starting at one end uh, with a virtual section you know, just before or just after each of those. Uh, I'm just gonna do it all in one diagram and it's gonna be a little bit quicker. Okay, so when we inspect this first region in here, um, we should, uh, we'll draw on our reaction force here which is 30 kilonewtons. And then before we get to the point load, there's not going to be any there's not going to be any changes in internal shear internal shear until we get to this point load. So just to the left hand side of this point load, um, this diagram will apply. So we have the shear force, and clearly whether or not you're just to the right of this support or just to the left of this, the shear force is pointing down. It's going to have to counteract that for uh, static equilibrium. So it's going to have to be equal to 30 kilonewtons in the positive direction. So when we plot that. Actually, you know what we should do is we should draw ourselves on some grid lines here. I think this is going to help us uh, keep things in line. Basically, I'm drawing on a grid line here at each of our points of interest where we're going to want to think about what the free body diagram looks like uh, just to the left and just to the right of. So this whole section in here, it's just going to be equal to positive 30 kilonewtons. So we can just draw on a straight line somewhere on our graph. Uh, let's go maybe right here, let's say that that is at a height of 30. If you're using graph paper, that's even better. Um, we'll try to get this relatively to scale though. So this line here is at 30 kilonewtons. All right, and that is true right up until the left-hand side of this point load. If we add in the point load onto our diagram here, I'm just gonna draw it here, whatever. Uh, pretend this is section one, and then we're just looking just to the right of it. Uh, well, this point load was 20 kilonewtons. So if we have 30 kilonewtons going up, 20 going down, then we're going to have just to the left of this point load, we're going to need 10 more kilonewtons pressing down, and that is a positive sense. So just to the left is going to be 10 kilonewtons, just like that. Now, if we go over just to the right of this area, nothing has changed since we got there, right? There's no other forces uh, between here and there. So this is just going to be a good old constant. Let's see a straight line. Uh, 10 kilonewtons right across. So let's make this clean. Boom, just like that. That's going to be 10 kilonewtons. All right. So again, if we're looking at this free body diagram sectioning just to the left of this, so obviously we have 30 kilonewtons going up just like that. This 20 kilonewtons going down and this shear force of 10 kilonewtons, that is going to get us static equilibrium and that's great. If we look at um, just on the right hand side of where this distributed load starts, it's still going to be 10 kilonewtons because if we look infinitesimally just to the right, this distributed load will be insignificant. Uh, it will also be infinitesimally small. Uh, so that means that just on the right hand side, we're also going to be getting that 10 kilonewtons. Now, if we look at the next, basically the next discontinuity is not the end of the distributed load. It is the next time we have this point load here. So basically we want to analyze the free body diagram just to the left of the point load. So if we redraw this diagram here, uh, we're not going to be introduce we're not going to be including the point load because it would be just outside the cut, but we would need to include that distributed load. Now it's 10 kilonewtons per meter, and this is one uh, this is one meter of length. So 10 kilonewtons per meter times one meter would be a total magnitude of 10 kilonewtons from that distributed load up until the point where we're just to the left of this point load. So looking at this, 30 going up, 20 going down. 
10 going down, so the shear force actually right at this point, just to the left of this point load, it has to be zero because otherwise it would not be in static equilibrium. So let's drop this down like that. And this sort of intuitively makes sense if you think about it because the shear, this is basically, this, um, this distributed load is applying 10 kilonewtons per meter and the shear is decreasing by 10 kilonewtons over the length of one meter. So um, now when we look at this, if we didn't have this point load here, then this would just continue in a straight, you know, the same straight line that it was going and it would just be a straight line that drops down to that would have been negative 10 kilonewtons. Um, but what we do is when we have a point load inside of a distributed load, basically we just come back to our drawing board here. Let's move, uh, let's move this over a little bit. Um, we have to add in that point load drawing the free body diagram for everything right up until the right hand side of this, so basically including that point load. So we're going to throw on 40 kilonewtons, pressing down. And so just to the right of this, we've got all of the forces added on. We don't have to add, we don't have to consider any more of the distributed load because it's infinitesimally small if we just take just to the right of that. So we have 30 going up, we have 20, 30 going down, and we have another 40. So we have 70 going down, 30 going up. Basically means we have to have uh, an internal shear force of 40 kilonewtons pointing up, which is going to give us that negative, it's against our positive sign convention. So that would give us a negative shear force of uh, basically negative 40 kilonewtons. So we're going to come down here, say it's uh, maybe somewhere about there. This is negative 40 kilonewtons. So basically it just drops us right down, boom, just like that if we're looking just to the right of it. And then lastly, what we want to do is we want to draw the free body diagram sectioning right before this. And so that's going to, we're going to have to adjust the amount of distributed load that we're considering. In this case, the distributed load, uh, we just include the whole thing, so that's just going to be uh, 20 kilonewtons. And so now we have 40, we have 80 going down, 30 going up. This is basically going to end off with a shear of negative 50 because this would have to be switched, right? We have 30 going up, this would have to be 50 going up, and that's not the positive sense, so we have negative 50 down there. So boom, negative 50 kilonewtons. All right, so let's seal that off. Now let's talk about this for one second. Um, this slope here is going to be the exact same slope as this because it's the same constant distributed load. Basically, we have this uh, we have this point load here acting in the middle of 40 kilonewtons, and it basically just steps it down by 40 kilonewtons. Or if for some reason it was pointing up, then it would have stepped us up, and then that slope again would have been coming down at the same rate. And the other thing that we want to do is we just want to check to make sure that we're we're happy with this final answer. So if you took, uh, if you considered the beam from the other side and took a section just to the left of this support here, well, we would have the reaction of 50 kilonewtons pressing up. We'd have the shear force pressing down. And if we're taking a small enough cut, then the distributed load would be insignificant or basically negligible. Uh, so that would be 50, we'd need for a static equilibrium, this would have to be 50 kilonewtons pressing down, which is opposite from this positive sense which means our shear force would be 50, negative 50 kilonewtons. That's exactly what we see here. So it looks like we've done it right. All right, now what we want to do also is for the bending moment diagram now, we also want to do this the fast way. We don't want to draw the, or we don't want to solve for the moment in terms of x because that's going to take forever. And if you have a lot of different uh, places where this is changing, then uh, you just don't have time for that sometimes on these problems. So basically all you do is you take the area of this, and if it's on the positive side of the axis, uh, we'll take that to increase the bending moment diagram's magnitude in the positive direction, basically going towards positive infinity. Whereas down here on this section, we have an area that's in the negative part of the shear force diagram. That's going to contribute to a change in magnitude of the bending moment diagram that pushes their graph back towards negative when we're traveling from left to right. Okay, so the way that we would look at this is this is 30 kilonewtons times one meter for the base and the area or the base and the height. Uh, which would give us a total change in magnitude of 30 kilonewton meters. So that new point there is 30 kilonewton meters. And where you have a horizontal line on your shear force diagram, that just becomes a straight line on your bending moment diagram. This little rectangle right here, uh, this is 10 kilonewtons. Uh, that's its height. Its base is one, mil one meter, so the area of that is 10 kilonewton meters. The change from this point to this point is going to be that, so that will be an increase in 10 kilonewton meters, which will bring this point to it actually to be 40 
kilonewton meters. All right, so we're going to connect those lines, boom, just like that. So those were two horizontal lines in the shear force diagram. Here we have a sloped line, and when we have a sloped line, it will, it's, the area is still positive, it's on the positive side, but it's going to give us a parabolic shape rather than a straight line. So if we take this area, it's base times height divided by 2, it's area of a triangle. Uh, the height is 10, the base is 1 divided by 2, is 5 kilonewton meters. So that's going to bring us up 5 kilonewton meters, so that will be uh, at a point here of 45 kilonewton meters. And uh, this is not a straight line, this is that parabolic curve, so I'll attempt to draw one, but it's pretty compressed in here. And actually what you can do, um, it, it's, it doesn't hurt to write, even to label this, say, this is linear. Uh, this section in here is linear, this section in here is parabolic. Um, if you're on a test or doing an assignment, this just shows your professor that you know what you're talking about, and if they can't tell that this is parabolic or linear because it's too compressed, uh, then that's going to help you for your cause. Now, in this last section down here, um, we're dealing with an area that's on the negative side of the shear force diagram, and it's actually a composite area, right? It's a rectangle and a triangle. Well, the area of the rectangle is uh, base height is uh, 40 kilonewton meters. And the area of this triangle here, base times height over 2, so the height is 10, the base is 1 divided by 2, that's going to be 5 kilonewton meters. And uh, like I said, these are on the negative side, so this is going to be a change in magnitude that pushes us towards the negative, basically negative infinity. And, uh, it'll be a difference of a change in magnitude of 45 kilonewton meters. So here we're up at 45 kilonewton meters and it's going to bring us down to zero. And that's exactly what we're looking for because we know this end has to have an internal bending moment of zero. So try and draw a parabola. It's going to be pretty bad. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and you can even label this parabolic. So there you go. That's the faster way to draw a shear force diagram and bending moment diagram than solving for every section the uh, the shear and the moment in terms of x. So on really complicated problems that might have a lot more than this going on, you can actually rapidly draw these shear force diagrams and bending moment diagrams using this method.